Before we begin, remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can click the join button, become a member, and get access for free to the exercise performance course where I teach you to squat, bench, deadlift, shoulder press, do pull-ups, and dips. Not only that, but you will also get the audiobook of the book of Puck, narrated by me, and also the exclusive podcast for members, The Coffee Cast, where we do we do weekly Q and A's. Hello, oh, yes. everybody. Happy New Year. So, okay, yes, it is confusing. You've got Germany and the Netherlands. Now, Netherlands, the language <laughs> is Dutch in American. So, in the Netherlands, we speak Dutch. Okay. Right? And people now, from Netherlands are Dutch. Yes. But now, in Germany, in you say Sprachen Sie Deutsch. Yes, because in German, their language is called Deutsch. Ah. And, that's, and that's where the confusion comes from, because yeah, in Dutch, Dutch, we call our language Nederlands. Okay. And that's where that comes from, and that's why I hate Michael Bay, because, and every other American creation that tries to involve my culture like in Transformers and even in the Barbie film where you see like a Dutch background with windmills and tulips and what are they wearing? Freaking lederhosen. It's like, that's German. That's the, the overalls and the hat. Yeah. And stuff, right? yeah. No. Okay. It's like, that's German. And even in Transformers 2, there's this guy speaking German and, uh, oh yeah, that's Hans. He's Dutch. It's like, no, he's not. He's German. He's not Dutch. My culture is being shat on by, by the their second cousin twice removed, you know? Dude, at least, at least girls don't go to your country to go become BBL demons. <laughs> no, they come here as demons. <laughs> Dude, I, I underestimate, yeah, I underestimated how much that affected me. Like, how I grew up with women that were like naturally curvy. They looked great growing up. You know, there wasn't obesity wasn't such a big thing. Social media was just taking off. Um, and then now women are like traveling three thousand miles to go get a risky surgery so they can get like five percent more likes on social media and get passed around by like dudes even more. Um, sure, but I realized like that's that's crazy. Hold on, my head's like crooked. Um, that's crazy, you know, like. Uh, now that's what my country's known for. Now, I don't know, passport bros, where guys with no game, you know, go to sleep with, you know, women of the night. So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not as good as cheese and tulips. But... Yeah, at least you guys got tulips. It's like, yay, tulips, you know. Yeah. No, but like I said, women come here; they are already demons. Like we get so many exchange students. We oh so yeah, many... I bet. We get so many exchange students from all around the world. It's like, no, they don't. They don't come here to become them. <laughs> yeah. Wait. So, how do you? How can you tell if someone's American in, in uh, Netherlands? Like, what's the first tell? Besides, they're taking pictures at that at that bridge in Amsterdam. The language, the accent. Like, can you tell from a distance if someone's American? Like, what? What's like? What tips you up? Like, can, oh, can can I tell from a yeah. distance? Yeah. Besides the color, like if, if they're like black or something. No. Not at oh, so so all black people are American. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and there goes the monetization. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And Red Hawk isn't even here. Yeah, I mean you can tell like overseas, they American from what I've heard, Americans, like when I was in the Navy, Americans for us, we smile a lot compared to other Europeans. So there's like their first tell. Um, tourists, when they're in a foreign country, they don't have, they tend not to have a pep, in, or like they don't have a sense of urgency when they walk. They're kind of just like, whoa. You know, you could tell easily that you have, they're, they're a tourist because they, everything that you, they see is impressive. You know, like when I went to, I bet you if I went to the Netherlands, I'd be like, tulips. And I'd just be like looking around like, wow. And then everyone would be like, hey, out the way. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me. I'm trying to get through. Well, uh, hey, Mario, happy new year to you too. Good to see you, by the way, Jonas and Phil. 
<clears throat> Happy New Year to you guys too. What was I about hey, to say? Oh, yeah, tulip. Yeah, it's like uh, you have some. There is this uh, specific tulip garden uh, that unfortunately isn't always open. Mm. But in general, tulips don't grow that much. Like you could buy them, but that's about it. Okay. And, well, uh, overall, I think Netherlands is a beautiful country. I I think the women are pretty too. Not my type, you know, but the women are pretty. Um. Yeah. It's like not my type. I am a connoisseur of women, sir. Like I have a certain. <laughs> I like, like I, the, du like the Dutch have a specific level of attractiveness yes but it does not come close to what mm. i consider to be attractive what, i want what? palpatine the quote <laughs> unnatural yeah something 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 dutch something 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 complete yeah it's the, that some would consider to be unnatural it's like <laughs> yeah well uh netherlands seems like a beautiful country but like you said amsterdam is pretty leftist right i and hate amsterdam this. Yeah, that's how I can tell. You, you said it was like the California of Netherlands, right? Yeah, it's like the California of Netherlands. It's full of goddamn yeah. tourists. Like, there's some pretty places. There's some pretty places, but like Zwolle, Utrecht, Groningen. Cool. Those are way prettier places. Yeah, but, I think Amsterdam, like, I, I mean, it's a beautiful place. Like, whenever I go to a place like California or a place that's like left, it's like maybe Paris. Or, I, I, I'm like, I, so I'm not here for the people. I'm here. For the history, I'm here for pretty pictures. You know, that's what I'm here for. Forget about the politics; they're going to disappoint me. I promise you. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, no, we have like beautiful church buildings, beautiful architecture, things yeah. like that. Like Zola, I love Zola. Oh, hold on, my uh, my dishwasher beep is uh going off. It's not my uh, it's not my uh. Oh, fire your fire alarm? No, it's my dishwasher. Yeah, uh, you're not so dark enough for a fire alarm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That the real one more, please. Please stand up. Hello, sir. You absolute savage. Good to see you. And a happy new year. NJ, happy new year. Happy new year, Jack. You and Troy Francis are the receipts of the red pill. No peeing in the volcano by you, fellas. I don't know what that means. What? Don't I don't know what that means. Don't flex too hard, Jack. You'll wreck your shirt. Cheers, mate. Ah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah. Uh, places in the Netherlands. Like you have the Hague, which is like our political capital. Uh, Hithorn, which is like a village. It's not. It's not the whole village, but there are like some houses. That <laughs> Jesus, nonstop, right? There are some houses like built on the water and they have all the water running through um, the houses. Not literally running through the houses, but besides the houses and things like that. That's pretty beautiful to see. Mm. I'm, yeah, guessing I the, I'm guessing the nightlife's good in Amsterdam. Probably, probably full of crazy tourists. Probably pretty fun. Oh yeah, but that's even in Groningen, man. That city never sleeps. I used to live there. That city truly never sleeps. Monday to um, Monday to Friday. No, uh, sorry. Uh, Monday to Saturday. Everybody's going out. So another question is like the like one more please say in the chat like the brothels that are like what's brothel culture like? Oh, I know about brothel culture in Amsterdam is from Euro Trip that one movie. That was such oh, a good yeah. movie, by the way. Remember Euro Trip? Like, is Euro Trip a good representation of Amsterdam? No. 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 <laughs> Damn it. No, no. I guess at I all. have to go back and uh unwatch everything I know about that movie because I, I thought, hey, that's how Amsterdam's like. Yeah. No, like like you have the red light district and things like that. Never been. Never been. They do want to um, um they want to close all of that down because uh, politics. Wouldn't, wouldn't you know there's some shady business going on there? Like, who could tell? Prostitution brings up shady business. Um, yeah, it's the same thing here in Dallas. Like, all the time, the, the strip clubs, there's always a big bust or something there. Um, something's always going on. But um, yeah, I, I didn't know how how that how they do that and it's like 
the, are the girls in the in the in the windows advertising themselves? That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Really? No, so what no. do they? They just stand. They just stand there and dance or something? No, they just stand there and wave and smile. Mm. Smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. I've always wondered, like, if I ever go to a foreign country, can I just like, and hear me out, like, hire these women to just hang out with me and show me and be tour guides? Like, hey, hey, how about I buy your day off and you just hang out with me for those the day and take pictures and show me around? You know, like, I don't is know. that? I was I always wondered that. Like, oh, look, Glenn and Lawrence, you have uh, uh, like, isn't that what? Wouldn't that be like better? Because like if you pay a tour guide, let's say you go to like Thailand or something, you pay a tour guide, it's probably more expensive than hiring like a couple of uh, ladies of the night. Be like, hey, ladies, uh, I'm gonna buy your day off. You don't have to touch me. Um, how about you show me around and we have fun and we take? I'll buy all your drinks, all your food. I just want to have a good time, right? Show me around. I won't. I, you don't have to touch me. You know, we could just be friends. You know, and I'm not gonna marry you either. I'm not taking you out of poverty. I, yo, but. And we're just, like, I've always wanted that. Is that, do you think that would be better than hiring a tour guide or something? That's a good question. I think the tour guides are mostly like the real touristy places that like you see on postcards and things like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I think the ladies of the evening would know more, if you know what I'm saying. They couldn't tell you about the history, but they could tell you about what's going on. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, you probably wouldn't be knowledgeable about the history, but they would probably tell you some good spots and stuff. Or maybe they try to extort you. They'd be like, "What is that? Like, let me, let me, let's take them to the most expensive place." And it'll still be probably like five dollars the most expensive dish. And I'd be like, "Yeah, wow, you sure got me with my American money." <laughs> <laughs> um, Netherlands is cheaper than America. Uh, I don't know if it's a lot, but it is everywhere cheaper than america besides like maybe like major cities and developed countries i don't like, know uh, like i know i know tokyo is very expensive and i know uh dubai is like i think it's the same as the united states correct me if i'm wrong uh mish uh Chad arabia um i think dubai and the united states are like the same because when i went in 2018 no 2016 um I bought a cup of coffee and I'm like, oh, this is the same price as like Starbucks, maybe a dollar or fifty cents more or less. But like, and then I, I bought movie tickets and they were also the same price because that's when Star Wars came out. It was the first new Star Wars movie, so I had to, little did we know we had I had no idea what we were walking into. Was that 2016? Yeah, I think that's when the Star Wars movie came out. You know, uh, the year of our Lord and Savior. <laughs> Dude, I thought I really thought the black guy was going to be the new Jedi because I'm like, oh, cool. A lost guy who has no skills is gonna take the hero's journey. This is gonna be cool. great. Yeah. Another yeah. hero's journey. Mm -hmm. Nope, got taken off the poster in uh, in China. Yeah, got taken off the poster in China. It's like, nope, you people can't have anything nice. <laughs> what do yeah. you mean, you people? It's like, oops. Um, yeah, I think I think one of the best things about traveling overseas, you know, and I know I shit on the passport bros in the beginning of the video, but one of the most, one of the coolest thing about being overseas is that when I when I traveled, you know, Navy and all, I felt less judged. You know, I felt like no one, people like in the United States, there's like this kind of like performance culture. You got to be better, and everyone's watching you. Um, you have to perform. But when I was like overseas, like I go, I went to a bar in uh, Lisbon, Portugal. Right, Lisbon is a big big party city because it's like the first European city left to right or uh, west to east that people mm -hmm. landed and partying. Right. Um, and I went, my first bar I went to was like a bar. It was like you walk in and there was like all these brawls hanging from the ceiling. It's kind of gross, but I guess, you know, titties, I guess. And it said, if you get, if whoever, uh, if a girl gets her bra up to the, to the bar and, and hangs it, she gets free shots all night. I was like, I don't think you would ever see that in the United States because it's just either where there's so many creeps here or there's just the culture's different, you know, like that kind of stuff. I've so, never heard about that. That's yeah, interesting. And, and then I went to, uh, an Irish pub. This is 2018. I went to an Irish pub and they were doing karaoke. And they, there was like these two girls from England that they looked like supermodels, right? They looked like, you know, one of them looked like Posh Spice. I was like, damn, these girls are hot. And I'm like, you know, they're probably going to be like bitchy, kind of like, 
But then I walked by them and they're like, they grabbed me and they were like, hey, here's the microphone, take it. I was like, oh, okay. And it was like a Freddie Mercury song. I'm not a Freddie Mercury fan, but you know, his his music's really fun to sing, uh, karaoke, to, right? Um, and I sang it and, and the girls were super nice. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then, um, you know, I talked with some old ladies from the Netherlands. Um, and they were like, you, did, did you Americans vote for Trump? Did you guys vote for Trump? I'm like, oh my God. Lady, it's Lisbon. <laughs> it's I mean, uh, Lisbon. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, a lot of people here are very political for some odd reason. Where it's like they they even held protests here mm -hmm. about Trump. Where it's like we are the Netherlands, madam. Nobody gives a shit. Like yeah. they used to in 1700, but they really don't anymore. And if we're gonna talk flack about America, they might just defund our whole military. So you might want to sit back and shut the fuck up. You might. It's like, hey, you know why we got socialism? Military. I'm like, yeah, sponsored by the U.S. It's like. Yeah. Um, and to finish the story, um, then they put on the worst. I mean, there, oh, there were some Brazilian girls there, right? And Portuguese women are thick. I did not know this. And I'm like. Nice, because I went to get a burger earlier and I had a giant thing of sangria, best sangria I've ever had. And the woman that was serving me was like, holy shit. Like, she was like curvy in all the right places. I'm like, wait, Port I thought Portuguese women were like the rest of Europe were like, they're like, you know, may they might be curvy, but for the most part, you know, not like Hispanic women. So I was like, okay, I like this place. Thin, uh, yeah. thin big boobs. Thin, big boobs. That's my thing. I don't fake like. They have to be. Fake if they have to be. As long as they're big, we don't care. Well. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, and so I'm like, wow. And then I saw some Brazilian women. And here's where here's where I'm like, one of the, one of the, her friends came up to me. He's like, oh, she likes the way you dance. Because I think there's some Latin music playing. And I was like, you know, kind of like practicing some salsa steps. And they're like, oh, she likes the way you dance. So her friend came up to me. He's like, hey, my friend likes you. And uh, so, so I just immediately walked over to her and I asked. And she was Brazilian. I didn't speak Portuguese, right? So I pulled her and we danced a little bit. And then I... Put out my Google Translate and I said, "Hey, you know, start spitting game through Google Translate, right, guys? Where there's a will, there's a way. You can complain or you can use Google Translate." Um, and uh, we danced, and then the club closed, and I'm like, "Okay, it's 2 a.m. You know, I was like in my American party mode, like, okay, everyone go home, I go back to the hotel, and everyone just went next door to this club, and the club was like this sweaty techno club, and I just followed the Brazil. I was drunk, you know, I was a drunk sailor, and then I followed the Brazilian girls, and they're all like." 3.30 in the morning, everyone started making out in the club. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I grabbed the girl and I made out too. And then I, I, after a while, I'm like, oh, she's probably – and I asked, hey, you want to go back to my hotel? She said, like, no, I'm good. I'm like, damn it. So I, I went back to my hotel. But I'm just like, yeah, European culture is very – like, I felt, wait, everyone's making out. No one gives a fuck. In the United States, everyone's, like, in their corner, in their little section. They pay, like, $2,000 for a section just so – They can sit. So girls will like come to them and I'm like, dude, what the hell? Yeah. Well, you have to approach, you have to get out there, put your glass away and walk up. That's what you gotta do. It's like the hostel in Istanbul. There are a couple of Americans there, a couple of Australians, uh, a couple of Germans, Irish. There's like all sorts of amazing people. Or all, all sorts of amazing people. It was just amazing. Hold on, my dishwasher's going off again. One second. Dishwasher, he says. Hmm. But yeah, Netherlands, it's all very liberated. It's all very uh, equalized. Everybody's equal, things like that. Everybody has their rights. You name it. <clears throat> all right, and I'm back. And we're back. We're back. So... January 1st, 2024. We're here. Here we are. We're we here. lived. We survived. We lived through it. Good times. Well, um, what are your plans for... No, you know what? You had fun? New Year's? I didn't, I didn't do it. The next day, I had a, a girl come over. She made me a rice noodle. Rice noodle. Why more? Uh, why more? Please correct me on, on Twitter. But she made me rice noodle. I think she said rice noodle, but like, I'm still learning the cuisine. But uh, and I like, I watched her. She she has a culinary degree, so when she ever, she comes over and cooks, I like kind of like 
pay attention. So, and she brought me a whole bunch of products. Um, and then I have trouble finding kimchi here in Dallas without having to drive 15 minutes. So she brought me kimchi and all that stuff. So mm, nice. I used to eat with just steak because it's like cabbage and it's really good for your stomach. So how cultural good. are you? You want to know what we ate yesterday? What? Burgers. That's cool. What's wrong? Burgers are cultural. Yeah. You know? uh, we, just, we, we just made burgers. Uh, just beef and we cooked the bacon ourselves and uh, cheddar That's cheese. already cultured. <laughs> you eat bacon on a burger is already cultured. My egg. I put an egg on it. Oh, it's like one more please to Nuk is the girl that no, she was Vietnamese. Yeah, she's Vietnamese. She's um concert violinist and has a culinary degree. So she's a smart girl, she likes to cook and all that stuff. So um and like then the, we played uh oh go ahead, sir. The whole being cooked for thing I still can get with that where it's like, nah, I know how to make my own steak. Well it's it. it's not for you, it's for them. Yeah, I know. Ah, they need to do that. Like women will kick and scream and complain all day that oh, I'm not gonna cook for a man. I'm not gonna cook for a grown human being. But Dude, then, money. they need it. They need to, like humans are meant to cooperate to do to do things for other people. How can you how can you say you're happy when your whole life is just what you can take from people? You're gonna go miserable no matter how you know. It's just like we are meant to help. Like. So when someone comes over to cook for you, wash them. Look how happy they are. You know, look how, like, when she was cooking, she was, like, in a flow state. Like, oh, chopping stuff and then hand me this and hand me that, you know. And I was just, like, with Tadashi on the couch just chilling, like, you know, just chilling. And, then she, and I said, hey, do you need anything? Are you good? You know, but, like, mm-hmm. people, women, it's, like, women taking care of a new man is, like, your new favorite AAA video game title dropping. It, it just excites them. I remember my half Brazilian ex. So she was half Brazilian, half Dutch. And there was one time, I will never forget this. I was one time, I walked into the kitchen and I got some pans or whatever. And she immediately ran into the kitchen. She's like, don't you dare take my job out, out. There she, it is. I'm telling she you. Just like, kick me out of my own kitchen. Like that. Watch what they do, not what they say. If they like whatever they say on Twitter means zero, nothing. Oh, not, nothing on the internet is real. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Fuck that shit. You're nothing real to me, Jack. You're real to me. That is true, and you are real to me, Nuke. And one of the be- one of the best people I met last year. So yeah. that was a great meeting. Um, I, I will say to one more, uh, one more, please. Is the question like uh, Latinas don't cook here anymore? Uh-huh. Like this fantasy. Like I, I'm Hispanic. And I go to Salt and I know a lot of Latina women. They're not traditional anymore. Like the last bastion of tradition is uh, here is like Asian women, especially because uh, there's a big Vietnamese community in Texas, and Vietnamese is the third most spoken language in Texas, like mm-hmm. overall, right? Spanish, really? Spanish is the second most uh, spoken language in all the United States, and I think Vietnamese is the third most, with the exception being California, which is um, Tagalog. Um, because the Philippines, you know, but mm. uh, so there's a lot of there's a big Vietnamese community here, and um, so you know, chances are that you will meet uh, Asian women here in in Texas because it's a great spot, very family oriented. You know, Asians tend to like you know very family oriented. So um, what I've been noticing, and I think I did a video on this, is that Latinas tend to be like the swing women of of women like whereas uh, you can have a latina that's whitewashed and then stacy you know like wants to hang out with all the girls and do the brunch thing and all that stuff you can have the super liberal uh latinas that are like you know blm and all that stuff black square latinas you know whatever that like support that crap and then you could have like the conservative latinas but like you know their dad's probably first generation immigrant or you know they probably live out in a mid-sized town in texas right um <laughs> up yours hawk but um and then you know and then you have the latinas that are just normal girls just like normal girls like the and then you have the anime latinas the weave latinas that are just like you see them at anime conventions and anime raves and yeah that, like they're like latinas are all over the place however asian women have this thing right what i've noticed because my ex was uh she was vietnamese uh before this one and she was like she liked going to the club and shaking her ass like but because she, she was a dancer like she liked it like studio dancing studio hip-hop dancing Right. And I was just like, when I first met her, I was just like, oh, you know, like, eh, you know, you know, relationship is her problem. We're just going to have fun. But then I noticed girlfriend quality is really fast. Like she 
she was like, hey, I, I want to make you tea. I want to make, I want to cook for you. Or I want to, I want you to try this. Uh, can, I, can I see you today? You know, like the genuine desire, like I'm trying, like investment. So I'm like, okay, this girl's maybe more than just a hoe. Let's see what happens. And um, she was very doing girlfriend stuff, like week two of us meeting, you know, of us like hanging out. I'm like, okay, this is, and I, that's what I'd say. Like Asian women have this ability to flip the switch from being, you know, kind of a hoe and doing hoe stuff to like girlfriend really fast. Like I can't see that in Latinas. I can't see that in white women. Um, black women, I don't even date, but like Asian women have that switch. So that's, that, and that's pretty, well, I mean, come on, come on. But um, that that's just something I noticed. You guys may agree or disagree, right? But like, that's the number one thing I noticed. And then for, and correct me, for European women, especially Eastern European women, like there's like less shame with their sexuality. like. Sex to them is like less taboo, if in, yes. a, in a sense. Yes, and the cooking thing and blah, blah, blah as well. But I do want to add, it's not necessarily that they want to do things for you, but it is that they are so self-reliant. Like, mm. I've oh, had wait. weird... The women, like, you're yeah, women are self-reliant? Yeah. Okay. yeah, like, I've had weird dates. Like, I've had... There was one girl once and she was sitting in my lap and she's like, what do I even need a man for? I have my own house, my own income and blah, blah, blah. And I look at her and I just think to myself, like, what in the world made you think that that coming out of your mouth would make me want to see you again? It's like, mm -hmm. they're, they're completely, they, they kind of have it the the wrong way around where it's like no it's like cool that you have your own house and whatever but like if you're already gonna talk like that it's like uh no oh god so there's a lot of self-reliance here very much independent yeah there's a lot of independency going on here and not saying that's bad however that independency reflects on their behavior which um that behavior then becomes almost hostile and mm. that's just unattractive like hostile behavior is just unattractive you know like you said like we are meant to cooperate cooperate yeah um <laughs> why more please jesus majority of white women have no idea how to do girlfriend stuff it's degrading yeah like, that's why i don't trust trads online it's like nope and all yeah. of a sudden 30 years like if you're so trad how are you single man yeah, well, and that's the thing, like, men are everywhere, you know? Like, men are in the sewers, men are next door, men are in the ceiling, they're in the walls. Like, how are you, you know, it, not only that, you're posting thirst traps. Like, how are you still single? Because part of the trad conservative, like, uh, complex of values and morals is to not be single and to be married. That's, like, the number one. That's the number one. Hence why they're attacking the red pill so much, because that's, that's what they think we, we do, like, tell men to stay single. Which we do because we tell them, hey, marriage is a bad deal. It's up to you. Educate yourself. Good luck. Um, and she's single and she's person, which is fine. Like, you know, with the obesity epidemic in America, I'm totally fine with women being hot. Trust me. It's nice palate cleanser for my eyes. Um, but the thing is, the problem here is like, hey, you're shaming men. But you're you're like, it's a longhouse, right? Because you get to be you get to post bikinis. You get to do all this stuff online and then you're shaming men because I, I, you know, decided to go online and look at some boobs, right? Which, you know, uh, in a rational sense, looking at boobs online isn't going to destroy the West, right? It's just looking, it's just boob pixels on a screen. I, oh man, I will, I will never forget that. I was at the evangelical church and um, there was some kid who gave a speech, a lecture. This was, how old was this guy? How old would he be? Early 20s? Something mm -hmm. like that. And he was talking about the porn epidemic amongst the young men in the church. And he's like, when you watch porn, gee, <laughs> I can't remember how he said it, but how I wanted to phrase it was even worse. <laughs> so let's go. It's like, when you watch porn, <laughs> Jesus doesn't turn away. <laughs> like, oof. <laughs> hey Jesus, what's up? <laughs> well, you want, you want to hold it? <laughs> like I like I said in that video, man. Like, if you if you have a bad habit, because addiction is like you're like it's like crack. You know, like you need to go to the hospital because you're you know you can't like you're on the way to work looking at porn. You know, while you're driving, you're you're gonna cause an accident. Cause, you know, that's addiction. 
Habit is just like, you can't, you know, you're just like, oh, it's four o'clock. I usually do this at this time. <laughs> but like, honestly, the only way out, um, the only way out of this like porn habit is to just talk to women in real life, man. That's like the best thing. And that's what the trads don't say. They just say, read the Bible and feel ashamed. I'm like, no, dude, you don't feel ashamed for your sexuality, right? The reason you're jerking off is because you have a healthy testosterone level. You're just stupid. You know, <laughs> like, like transform that raw desire into, you know, like talk to a girl. And, and, and I always tell guys like, Hey, you're stop being ashamed for being a man. Cause that's what everyone's trying to tell you, both the trans and the liberals and everyone be ashamed oh, for being yeah. a man. Yeah. That's and that's a just big like, one. yeah. Like our grandfathers are folks, supposedly our grandfathers were had more testosterone and more traditional and met more men than we are, as they say, they wish say, they had the online access they have in the 21st century. Yeah. Like God, and, man. And but I'm pretty sure our grandpas also had uh, Playboy calendars on their wall where they would change the radiator out of their car and stuff like that. Like, you know, they're just making up stuff just to shame men's sexuality. And I always tell guys like, hey, go outside. You see a girl with nice boob meat out and she's running, dude. That's God made. God made them for you. God's made women for us. It's literally in the Bible. God made women for us. So you gotta have that mindset. Are you are yeah. you gonna pivot this year, Nuke? Are you gonna pivot yes. to Christianity? We're pivoting to Christianity and anime. I might pivot to Islam then. I was like, ah, uh, why not? Inshallah. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh you got you have uh, Chad of Arabia in the chat. Yeah, we have Chad of Arabia, but you know what? How long will he survive the Gaza? Who knows? Yeah. We might need a new one. What was Can that? Can you even say that word? No, I just I was just laughing. <laughs> Like Gaza, I can yeah. say that. I can say that. I can. I can say other things, but I can't say that one. It's like I have a, like what what has been left. What is left to say about trad cons and shaming men for he- having a healthy sexuality? Yeah, there's not yeah. much left to say. But it's like those guys in the evangelical church. It's like you're not addressing the problem. They were like talking mostly about like don't watch porn. It's like. You're missing the point. Why are these guys watching porn? Because they're incapable of finding a partner or at least talking to somebody. They're they're just incapable of making a human connection. But no, it was all about porn evil, porn bad. It's like you're not helping them. Absolutely not helping them. Now, the church girls weren't helping them either because the same church girls who were all up in front on Sunday morning were the same ones you saw in the parking lot of McDonald's at Saturday night. Where it's like, that's interesting. It's like, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Um, it, it's, it's just... And I think, I think the most insulting thing is that they think we're stupid. Like, you know, like, you think a guy, guys like us that have uh, experience with women, who talk to women, who hear women, overhear women, who've lived with women, who had sex with women who've been broken, their hearts broken by women, who worked for women, who had women work for them, who live around women, who are related to women in their family. And you're trying to tell us like, hey, I'm not, you know, I have, I'm wearing a shirt two sizes too small and I'm cooking and the, the, the cake batter is splattering on my boobs. Like, why are, why are you shaming me? Like, are you don't, you know, like whatever freaking straw man they use. And I'm like, no, like we're not, we're just not stupid, right? If you would have just posted that and would and, and that's it, I would not. No one would have cared, right? But the thing is, like you're saying, hey, porn is rotting men's brains, and I, I'm a try. I don't. I'm not gonna ever have an OnlyFans because I'm someone's future wife and um, and mother, right? But you posted that future wife and mother shit like four years ago, and you're you're not a wife and mother yet, but you're still posting cake splattering on your on your really tight shirt. You have great boobs, man, but like. You know, like stop with the hypocrisy, and because well, guys, that's... we love on, we love boobs. We just like honest boobs. We like boob. Like when I go out with a girl, I don't want to be shamed because I'm looking at her tits. I want her to giggle and like smirk and be like, "Yeah, I, I know, I got nice boobs." You know what I'm saying? Like I just, I just like honest boobs. You know? No, I mean, what's wrong with it? And I mean, if you're out with a girl, like she's probably mm-hmm. going to want you to look. I not like look people where i'm not we're not doing touchy feely bad stuff here but it's like if she is on a date with you and she's interested in you she's gonna dress up to look appealing to you and there's nothing wrong with that but like these things on the internet where it's like that's not what i meant it's like oh fuck off like fuck off we're not stupid 
That's the worst thing when people think you're stupid. Like you can call me a retard, but don't call me stupid. You know, there's a difference. Yeah, uh, it just yeah, and, and like another thing is like that's that's part of the that's part of the whole culture war now or the election is that both sides both sides they stand on one fundamental principle that they both believe that young men are idiots. That's and I you know on rule zero I told Andrew like. Hey, dude, like, how about we just let guys, like, fucking come to these conclusions? Like, we'll, yeah, we'll connect the dots, but, like, how about... Wait. Yeah. Sorry, didn't want to interrupt you. Go well, ahead. I, I, I'm just saying, like, uh, let's just, you know, guys, are, young guys are horny and they're inexperienced. That's it. it. You know, like, a lot of the infrastructure that we see around are, is run by guys that are 25 years old, 24 years old, right? Nuclear warships are run by 24-year-olds. I know because I had to train these guys. Like, let's let's stop like with this whole young men are dumb and we need to guide them and we need to, like no, they just need an older brother to shame them into being a better man. Like, hey dude, like you really you really bought that OnlyFans? Like, hey dude, you you really not gonna go to the gym today? Like shit like that. That's what they need. You don't need to make a whole complex freaking war about young men's souls. You just need to tell them to go to the gym. You just need to tell them, hey man, stop going to eat Chick-fil-A so much. Like, you know, hey, hey dude, you said you want to approach that girl and it's been an hour. What a pussy, you know, like like that's what guys need. They need that like male kind of older brother kind of like friend. You know, they need friend groups. They don't need like you know trad god six 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 trad titty wife. You know, telling them like, hey, making you know, five minute videos about asking if he's the bad guy because some fucking gnome with a white beard blocked him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't, yeah, it seems very uh very familiar. <laughs> but like that's that's what guys need. You know, we need to start like treating treating guys like with, with a little bit more. Not, I want to say respect, but like fucking like, hey, dude, you're fucking twenty five. You're you're smart enough to get a degree. You're smart enough to not break the law. You're smart enough to like look and use Google and find solutions. Like, let's fucking leave it in your hands. If you want to be an idiot, that's on you. But like. I'm not, there's no war for your soul, bro. You have to do this for yourself. And, and otherwise, we can always do this. And thank you very much for making this. Snake, are you okay? Snake? Snake? I just want to know Rob's face when he saw, when I dropped that off. <laughs> I've been using it already. Like, oh, I wanted to make another one too, but with um, you know when you lose in Street Fighter Two and it says yeah. go home and be a family man. <laughs> I want to use that one. You know what? I'll make it. I'll make it this more angry shit today. But... Yeah. Oh, why don't you just stop trying to save the world and get a hobby? Oh yeah. I mean, oh, that we... was my like. With all due respect to Andrew, like that was kind of my thing. Like what I heard. I heard a lot of should. I heard a mm. lot of should. And I don't work on should. It's like, I don't work on should. Most guys don't work on should. It's like, look at what is. We're not going to put the Gino back in the bottle. Done. How can you get the most out of this? There are guys who are done with dating and just want to build Lego ships and hang out with their friends. There are guys who still are dating but are kind of like yeah i'm only doing this for fun mm -hmm. and i play final fantasy 7 or 14 and 16 and 16 you have guys who are like okay occasionally date here and there mostly building lego ships <laughs> like but the whole like we're, we're just seeing, fucking off our own lot basically we're just fucking off you, our own we're, where it's like you look out you look out after yourself and it's like yeah but we need to do this i don't need to do shit I don't need to do shit for anyone. Anyone ain't doing shit for me. It's like, okay, I'll hang out with you and the guys here on stream and we'll try to bring out some actionable advice, which is very simple. Lift, clean up your diet, uh, do basic grooming, and not just to be attractive. I want to bring this point home. I really want to bring this point home. It's not only to be attractive. It's we just had the holidays. We just had New Year's, a very depressing period for a lot of people. That small little step to get out of bed, to go shower, and put on some goddamn moisturizer. Some guys will be like, oh, that's gay, putting on moisturizer. No, it's good for your skin, blah, 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 blah. But it's that small little step you take of putting effort into yourself. That small little decision you made of not eating crap but eating eggs and steak and vegetables. 
is a step you took for yourself to care more about yourself. That's, you know what? 2024 is going to be the year where guys need to take care more of themselves for themselves. Like, stop this whole, I want to get the girls up, blah, blah, blah. How are you treating yourself? Yeah. Where does boundary enforcement come from? How you view yourself, how you value yourself. You don't value yourself. Your boundaries don't mean shit. Like I said in that tweet, um, you're already isolated. You're already off the touch just for being a man. Your testosterone levels are, are like, are, they want to keep your testosterone levels low, whether directly or directly. Um, what do you have to lose when you live your own, uh, become your own point of origin? What do you have, trust me, what do you have to lose? You get a girl flakes on you because you decided not to drive 20 minutes to go maybe have a chance of laying her? That's nothing, dude. Like, what do you like? I always ask yourself. That's that. You know who came? I want to ask Trump. Donald Trump when negotiating with the African American community, he was trying to tell him like, "Hey, the Democrats have done nothing for you. Vote, vote, for, vote Republicans. See what happens. What do you have to lose?" Trump, and then the, Trump just, just came like, on yeah. and went, "Guys, nothing has changed for you." Exactly. <laughs> and I, you know, whether however you feel about him, right? He had a point. He, he's just like saying, "Hey, this this thing, this identity you guys attached to, which is like liberal." Whatever politics back when you know politics actually mattered, <laughs> um, he said, "Hey, it hasn't been working for you. You guys are still poor." And then you know he's like, "Vote Republican. See what happens. What's the worst that could happen?" You know. And actually, you know, a lot more African American people did better under his. Uh, whether that be him or policies or just I don't know, whatever. I don't care. But like that's how you got to market this stuff to guys. Like, hey, you're you you go to church and you love God. Great. How's that working out for you? Oh, they want me to marry single moms. I'm like, okay, cool. Oh, okay, you you decided to go to college and you decided to be part of the liberal complex of thinking and all that stuff. Well, how's that work for you? Yeah, I got laid here and there, but like the girls want me, the girls want me to go to like protests and, and care about the environment. I just want to make money. I'm like, okay, cool. And they're like, so this dreadful stuff, you guys don't want guys to get married, right? I'm like, no, 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 it's whatever you want. There's like, whatever I want. And like, yes, it's whatever you want. I'm like, wait, so if I want to just go overseas and bang high ladies of the night i can do that i'm like yeah that's you or hey i want to get married and have kids is that yeah that's you they're like mm -hmm. wait so what what are you guys trying to tell me that it's all about what you want oh they, that needs that is also what, like what? the thing like the red pill criticism where it's like you are all against marriage <sighs> marriage is a legal bad deal for men that's it if you want to get married, go ahead and make them marry. Get educated on it. But if you want it, do it. If not, don't do it. That's it. I, we've but, looked at what, what was given, and guys have made conclusions out of it. Not anti-marriage. We're not anti-anything. Are we? We're anti not making yourself your own point of origin. That's it. Like, you know, like setting yourself on fire to keep others warm, which is what they want. They all want. And that's mm -hmm. and that's the problem. Like, like imagine a twenty five year old guy having trouble getting laid. Maybe he has one date a month, right? Where a girl actually gives him time a day because he's still, you know, he's still guard. Uh, maybe he got out of a breakup or whatever. Twenty five year old men struggle with, right? Um, and you're he goes on a podcast and he has this guy who's forty years old, you know, telling him, "Hey, you have to be better so you could save the West." I'm just like, that's a lot for a twenty five year old to kind of like process, like. Yeah, and, and a lot of men will, like, you know, like when Jordan Peterson said, oh, responsibility is what men want. I'm like, yeah, well, we also want to be appreciated. We also want to have regular sex. We also, you know, want to have a, a – we don't want inflation, you know. We want a president we want that's authority. not authority. Yeah, exactly. We don't, we don't want to worry all the time with, like, the smallest thing you say, like a fucking bomb explodes. We yeah. don't want to worry about the first movement we make, that the fucking nuclear war bomb drops. It's like – but – these days it's like it's not even accepted anymore to have boundaries where it's like oh you're just manipulative i'm like okay it's like yeah. you see it on twitter all the time it's like he said no he's a manipulative asshole it's like <laughs> right um, and then you and have the and then you have like what you mentioned like the churches and things like that it's that tweet i made like love languages uh what was it Love languages, personality types, and attachment theory are all used as a crutch for a guy to use 
uh, no, to view his spouse as a build a bear project, mm -hmm. only to admit to himself that she's treating him as he doesn't want to be treated. Yeah, and it all comes down to like the women have agency. Like it, a woman um, treating you like shit is it because that's who she is in astrology and calendars and then and, walk or oh I was I was abused as a child. I'm like so what? What does that have to do with me? You know, I, like. I do want to say like that is a bit of a thing where it's like like of course that is absolutely a horrible thing mm -hmm. absolutely and don't wave that into the wind or whatever but it's like a guy should not keep making excuses for uh being behaved badly kind of thing I've dated girls who used to be like in a weird relationship and whatever. And I think there were certain points where they, they, they all of a sudden treat you very weird. It's like, look, I'm not the enemy. You know, that's not me. I'm not the enemy. And then yeah. it's like, oh, it's like process. They need to go through something. Things well, like that. Well, but a lot of men, they, they want to control the universe because they know a little bit about women. First off, or or they think because they discovered a secret. Like, I'm gonna get a little personal, right? Um, like for the the sacred cow of the tribe, it's just the virgin girl, right? And it's like, okay, they think that if they ever find this mythical virgin girl, the minute that he sticks the tip of his dick inside of her, excuse the language, guys, um, he's she's gonna be like soul bonded through his dick into his body, like an Avatar, where they like touch the the like. Like the metaphorical dicks, you know, they connected and they were soul bonded. That's what the trans think. And I'm here to tell you, hey, like I the other day, inadvertently, I I uh found out girls a virgin. I took her virgin and I was like, what the fuck? And I was scared. First scared because I'm like, oh, is she gonna like chase me now for the rest of my life? Because you know, I still had that little bit of remnant programming about vir virginic women, right? And it, it turns out no, she's going on trips. She's a flight attendant. She's she's in Guatemala right now. She's probably partying. She's probably seeing another guy. Who knows? I don't know. Not my problem. But like, that's that's a, a lot of like men have these like presuppositions about women to the point where it can ruin your life or ruin your mental health because you think like. And then uh, the girl I was seeing yesterday, she 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 has treated me better than any woman has ever treated me in my life. Even my mom sometimes. Right. This this girl came over, made ramen, brought her Nintendo Switch. We played Overcooked all night. Um, we hooked up. Even during um, in, in sexy time, she's like, hey, don't worry about me. Just I want to please you. Like This girl is like genuine desire, but she doesn't want to be in a relationship, right? And that's another thing guys have to understand. Like The relationship is her problem. Just because the girl is doing everything right, there are girls that would rather die than, than have a label. And there are girls that do nothing for you and want that label, right? The girls that do just start for sex, come over, eat your food, want to get taken out, do absolutely nothing for you. And then in two weeks or like, you know, in, in like uh, two months, they're like, hey, what are we? You know, I want you to meet my mom, blah, blah, blah. And they've done nothing for you except come over and maybe hook up. And then, you know. Oh, that's so. where the coffee date comes in. Like, no, we're going to go for coffee. And we haven't met yet. Uh, done. Coffee. Yeah. You know? like, these are some old topics that are being brought up right now. Like the foodie comes to mind. And they need like the labels come to mind. It's like uh, you want to get to know each other first, you know. And like I met a girl once who, uh, like she she went around and she was honest about that. And she even dropped like, yeah, no, I only lost my virginity like two months ago or whatever. And she's like, I just went on Tinder and went for it. I'm like what? She's like, yeah, I was still a virgin, but, you know, I just went on Tinder. And it's like. Yeah, it was not like the movies, guys. It's not like the movies where, where it's like a 90s teenage coming of age movie where they, you see them like on the bed. They're like rubbing bodies and it's like slow love making. And then for the rest of the movie, she's like in love with them. That's not how it works. You know, like virginity doesn't even mean that much to women, you know, in the, the world, at least in the U.S. Yeah, the world is dark and full of terrors. Real quick, not stop Dre for the two dollars. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Responsibility without authority is slavery. TFM, turd flinging monkey. Yeah, I mean, I haven't listened to turd flinging monkey in a while. He's a bit too much. Uh, 
Like he's a very intellectual guy. He is. It's like there's only so much negativity that it can can take. Is it negative? Is it realism? I got a certain point. I don't want to dwell in it. I don't want to dwell in it. Where it's like, yeah, it's kind of messed up in the dating scene right now for both men and women. Which, yes, I can absolutely acknowledge. Like, it's not pretty for women out there as well. Well, I um, Ryan talks about this where he said that like you have two guys. Guy, a guy has his presuppositions, uh, presupposition, excuse me, about like the tribe. Like, the, let's say the, the 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 titty girl, titty baking girl, right? Um, a guy will see that and they'll defend her because like, oh, that's what I want. I want a girl that's hot and traditional and she's a good wife. If a girl says, hey, I'm traditional, oh, you know, you fell for it. Like, hey, she's, she could be a huge bitch. She could be a star, starfish in bed. She could be selfish. She could be a lot, a lot of shitty character traits. But, you know, maybe that liberal girl with the tat on her forearm or something with the fake boobs or something um, that – also is probably doing that stuff. She's probably nicer. She's probably more respectful. She's probably, um, you know, kind of likes you better and treats you better. Like, don't women give themselves these labels for a reason. They're trying to pull the wool out of your eyes. Like any girl out there could be the best match for you. And it, it can transcend race. It can transcend. The only thing it can probably not transcend is age. Like you, you're not probably going to meet a girl five to 10 years older than you. Who's going to treat you good. That That's probably a lie there. But like, mm. um, when it comes to this stuff, like think, just because a girl says she's a good girl does not mean she's a good girl. Whether it be like, hey, I'm Fred, or hey, I'm not a slut. Like, no, that's why we have mental models like assume the sex to protect you from going insane. All you have is her actions. At the end of the day, is she treating you right? Assume, don't obsess. That's where you start. You assume, you don't obsess. Thanks, Ryan. Like. And then you look at her actions towards you. And do those actions warrant your attention? Like, is this somebody who treats you in such a manner that you want to give them attention? If the answer is yes, then okay, sure. If the answer is no, you can communicate all you want. You can find love languages all you want. You can theorize on attachment styles all you want. At the end of the day, it's very simple. Do you want to be treated in x y or z manner it's all that matters not so great like you say what do you want it's like what, you what do you want not stop dre 360 for another two dollars thank you <laughs> tradcons nuke is licking all the fresh ice cream it's such a dumb dumb phrase but thank you for the two bucks dre. girls don't want relationships well, I'm I'm seeing a 31 year old or 30 or 31 year old Moldovan shit, gorgeous. Like I have no idea why she's single, and she's polite, gorgeous. Like you know, not fat at all, flat stomach, goes to the gym. She's a hairdresser. I've been seeing her for like three weeks, four weeks, up, uh, and no signs of like bad character. You know, and she's single, and I was like, girls don't want to be. And I asked her, hey, like. Like, uh, what's your relationship? It was like, oh, oh it's that. Like, what, what, what was the last time you're in a relationship? Like, oh, I just, I'm not looking for a relationship right now. I'm just like, that's not my fault. <laughs> that's not my fault. You don't want to be in a relationship. So, no, but like, be careful. People can hide who they are. Mm, that is true. That is true. Yes. Um, people can hide who they are. Um, what else? Yeah, I don't have much. Like, like I said, like the whole dating red pill stuff, it's, there's not much left to say other than what has been said already. And like, what do guys need to look out for? Like 2024 guys, if you have any new year's resolutions, personal accountability program, get on that, like get yourself in shape first. But it's like I said, like year of the mental point of origin, however you want to call it. It's those small steps, those small steps towards yourself. It's like, look at what, is shown look at it how do you phrase that you phrase that perfectly um what was it about what like what take it for what take it for what it's worth take it for what it's worth what do you so, mean look at people's uh look at people's actions like benefit of the doubt no nah, where it's like go by your own experience go by what your gut tells you and 
just go from there. Oh, by the way, get Nuke to a thousand subs. Come on, people. We've got almost 40 people watching. Head over to Nuclear Caldillo. I don't even know if I say it right. Um, I, I said all pronunciations. So I accept all pronouns. Um, 2024 will be the year of the trad girl, right? The trad girls are, are already at war. It's December 1st, or sorry, January 1st, and the trad girls are already fighting for the top spot. Um, you know, you, I mean, go on Twitter and look at it. Like, girls are fighting to be the, they're going to be the ones that decide the election, right? The, you know, the trad woman. That's, that's not your problem, right? Whoever's president is not your problem. You still have to get jacked. You still have to talk to women, right? Here, here's what I got to say. I made a video about becoming the villain, right? You get to choose. You're going to be a villain no matter what because you're a man, man or villains in society, right? Whether, whether they, you know, um, denigrate you because you like younger women, whether they denigrate you because you like women with low body counts, whatever version, men will be, you will be the victim or you will be the villain no matter what, whether you like it or not. Um, whether you want to be the dumb crony that gets taken out first in the movie, you know, at the gate where the hero comes, or whether you want to be the guy at the end of the movie with the wine uh, bottle or the wine glass, kind of like already telling the hero that, you know, the, the missiles have launched and I already won. You know, and the way you do that is by by like silently being quiet and let people be stupid. Let let the woman fight and argue about um, who's going to be president and let them, you know, talk about elections. Let them use their boob meat to, to win elections. Right. Whatever. They get. That's what they, they're trying to use their boob meat to win elections. Right. Uh, you, on the other hand, are going to quietly have sex with both liberal and conservative women. You're going to go to the gym. You're going to make better friends, you're going to continue to level up in life because there's nothing else for men to do except become better, right? You're going to become a better dad or, or a better brother or a better son, whatever you, what your, your metrics of success is. Because remember, the red pill is about you, not about us. Uh, you will continue to do that. That way, when all this crap comes up, uh, boils, and whoever is president and whatever, whether we have, like, uh, the country goes to shit or the country gets better, whatever, you're already... You have already been laid 20 times while everyone else is fighting and arguing over something they have no control of, right? Yeah. Let that's the boot meat trap thoughts worry about that. That's not your problem. That's why I haven't been as active on Twitter where it's like, uh, I'm not going to fight. I'm Right now, I'm more focused on um, um, like the guy, like the guy's issues and why they come here. Like what's underneath? Mm. Why do you have trouble with certain behaviors why did you start showcasing uh x and y and z behaviors and calling that out for what it is like not an excuse but like hey that's what you're doing that's what you're doing yeah either making excuses you are uh avoiding you are all kinds of things like that you're uh procrastinating for x y and z reasons now that you know, what are you going to do? Now that you know, what are you going to do? You want to wrap this one up? Um, yeah. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Okay. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Remember, go sub to Nuke. Get him to 1,000. If you um, comment down below your thoughts of this show, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to support the channel, you can click the join button. Get access for free to my version of the Book of Book audiobook, Genronomics 1 and 2. The audiobook narrated by me and uh, Q and A's. So, uh, also, New Year's is here, January first. If you want to get in better shape, but you don't know how, you don't know where to start, help me help you. Personalized training program, diet plan, form checks, um, private Discord, and a monthly consultation. Uh, that's it from us. Any last words? Uh, yeah, guys. If you want to, um, if you guys need coaching. Uh, Academy, uh dot com slash nuclear value. You'll, you'll you'll go there and uh, just um, schedule something, and then we can talk. You know, we talk about your dating problems. Uh, you want to dress better? Like I had guys. You know, um, I was playing Final Fantasy yesterday, guys, on Twitch, and I had a guy ask me about fashion. I gave him like a twenty minute rundown of how to choose a good jacket based on where he lives and all that stuff. Guys, use us. You know, use us. Um, if you guys watch us, you know, like this stuff is taking up your time right ask questions you know we'll be happy to obviously we need a little bit of money ourselves because this does take out of our time too but use your social media intelligence right 
I spent my 20s you, going on a well-built style.com learning how to dress. Uh, I read Roosh's books about gay and on the forums before he went all oh, crazy, right? Um, I, I like read articles and I was like, I need to apply that now, right? This stuff, don't let it become entertainment, right? 2024, don't let the red pill become entertainment. Use it. Use us. Use Jack. Use Nuke. Use Rule Zero. Okay, whatever, whoever, whatever flavor you like, right? Use it. Stop using red pill as entertainment because if you do, you're gonna go nowhere, and then you're gonna be mad that the trad thoughts are showing boob meat when you yourself could be smashing trad thoughts. And trust me, trad thoughts are really slutty, my friend. You'll, they are great. I prom, I prom. Look at me. I prom. Trad thoughts are awesome, but not on Twitter. In real life, in your bed, they're awesome, but. Yeah, that's what I got to say. Oh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, cheers. There we go.